This is the Statement Show Podcast, covering sports, technology, and entertainment in the news. With your hosts, Terry James and Zach Chase, we welcome you to premiere episode number one. This was recorded on March 14th, 2012. So this is our first episode, and I guess we're going to really get started with sports talk here. Absolutely. Sounds great. So uh, obviously we know that the Redskins gave up a lot in order to draft uh, Robert Griffin III. Um, tell, me a, basic, tell me a little, who's Robert Griffin III? Give me a little background. Okay, well, uh, Robert Griffin III is a uh, Baylor's quarterback. Uh, he's going to be coming um, into the draft this year. Basically what happened is uh, the Redskins had to move up in order to draft him. Now, with that being said, uh, they ended up essentially giving up thir- uh, three first-round picks. Uh, they gave up uh, next year's um, and in the following year, and they switched with the Rams this year as well, and essentially they gave up a second-round pick this year as well. So now, you know, a lot's kind of been made of that. Uh, you, you kind of got to figure you, know, you got some kind of Redskin fans shaking their heads and scratching their heads and, feel, you know, is this the right thing? Well, you know what? On the outside looking in, if you say we're a Cowboys or Phillies or Giants fan, you might be sitting around laughing at this. You might be sitting around like, hey, you know, Redskins are up to their old tricks. Redskins are trying to figure out this. Trying it's to a, figure it's out. a really big deal that they give up three. Huge, uh, huge. You're right. You're right. It's, it's, it's a very big deal. Um a lot of Redskins fans shaking their heads right now. <laughs> exactly, and and you know what, they, I, it, it it's kind of a uh, it's kind of up in the air for me. Um, I'm I'm I guess growing up in the area, I, I get a chance to watch a lot of the Redskins games. Um, but in the same sentence, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, if I'm if I'm a Cowboys fan or a Philly fan or a Giants fan, you know, I'm I might be sitting around laughing at this and thinking, okay, Dan Snyder, who's the owner of the Redskins, you know, here he is, he's 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 given up everything and he's doing this all over again for, you know, what the twentieth straight year now, the Redskins fans have been trying, hoping that the Redskins can put together a a good team, and you know that is where I'm looking from the inside looking out. As if I was a Redskins fan, I'm going to be sitting around. I'm going to be saying, you know what? We have to do everything that we possibly can in order to put the best team on the field. And look, whether you like it or not, the NFL is a quarterback league. I mean, it's it's just the way it is. If you don't have a quarterback, you're not going anywhere. And Obviously, everybody thinks of the big names, you know. Sure. M- Manning. Uh, yeah. My definitely. man, Alex Smith. <laughs> okay. Maybe <laughs> that's a big name. He had a really good year last year, so. He- he had a great year, absolutely. And so with that being said, um, you know, do we know that Robert Griffin the third is gonna be all that? No, we don't. But, you know, if if I'm a Redskins fan if I'm a Redskins fan and I'm looking at this and I'm saying, look, we we have to do everything that we can. We really don't have a choice in the matter. We we can't sit around, you know, sitting on our hands and and and, and wondering, you know, what if we do this? And 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 after last year, Rex Grossman and, and, and John Beck uh, it, it was it was a tragedy. So, you know, I think in my own personal opinion, this was an absolutely a great, great deal. Sure, they gave up a lot. But, hey, if Robert Griffin is as good as they say he is, then you know what? In two, three, four years when Robert Griffin's taking everybody to the playoffs and maybe even the Super Bowl, you know what? They're not even going to remember that they gave up all these picks. What do you think it's going to cost them? Well, at, at this moment, they, you know, they have given up their, you know, their their uh, number one pick for next year, and they gave up their number one pick for the uh, the following year, and you know, they they did a little switching, but overall, you know what, there may be a little bit of growing pains this year with uh, Robert Griffin, but honestly, I think is if he is advertised as as the way they have been advertising him, look, this guy, 
he he basically at the combine this year at the NFL combine this year ran the fastest uh, forty that that any quarterback has ever ran at the combine. Uh, you know that that is an amazing feat all to itself. This man is six three, two hundred and some change. He's a big guy, and to be getting there at four three speed, hey, it's amazing. And and he, he's got he's been compared to Michael Vick. You know what? Look. Griffin needs obviously get a couple of games underneath his belt to be compared to Michael Vick. But with that being said, hey, he's pretty close to being just as fast. And in my opinion, what I've watched of RG3, he's got a better arm than Michael Vick. I mean, maybe not as big of a cannon as as Michael Vick, but he's 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 much more accurate than Michael Vick. So, hey, if he's even three quarters of as good as Michael Vick, uh, the Redskins are going to definitely be making the playoffs. I guess they should first find out, you know, if he's a dog lover. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so <clears throat> did you really mention, though, I mean, what what do you think he's going to get paid? Have they been talking money or do they only really worry about the draft? Well, um, it, basically last year they, they established a uh, a pay scale. Um, off the top of my head, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, they haven't really – uh, went that far as far as to say exactly what uh, RG3 is going to be paid at the moment. But, hey, at this moment, if I'm a Redskin fan, I don't even really care. You know, I just I, – I, I, I need to hear and and see uh, greatness at this point. You know, I mean, I, I know that people are looking at it and going, man, we cannot survive another 5 and 11 or 6 and 10 season. Robert Griffin could be the guy. I mean, granted, he could be a major disaster, but, hey. If they're paying him five, six, seven, eight million dollars a year, pay it at this point. So, you, I, as we have talked previously about this subject, you mm. said that most uh, quarterbacks or players they don't get large sums. Like they talk big money, but mm. do you think they often get all that money, uh, or is there times when they get hurt they don't get paid? Oh no, no, no. Um, if 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 they are injured, of course they're going to get paid for that. Now, uh. The only time that they really wouldn't get paid uh, and they would be docked game checks uh, is if, uh, you know, they they've obviously done some crazy off the field <laughs> uh, shenanigans that they they tend to do in the NFL. Uh, but overall, like as far as injury wise, now they're going to get paid as, 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 as if they're injured and, and, and it was nothing insane, uh, you know, off the wall car crashes or car chases or, you know, whatever. Obviously, the dog. The dog uh, fighting incident that Michael Vick had, you know, mm-hmm. he he was kicked out and 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 obviously didn't get. Oh, but he turned a new leaf. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope he's he's rehabilitated now. <laughs> um, so anyway, <laughs> uh, so I mean, we have all this talk about the draft. Mm-hmm. Um, give me a, a brief description of what goes down here uh, when you have this. this. Is like a three day event, a two day event. It actually is. Uh, they, they, They've turned we, into a big television hoopty now, though, haven't yes, they? Yes, that it has. Uh, basically, uh, they'll they'll advertise um, and, and take care of the draft um, on a primetime event. Uh, I think it's going to be on ESPN, um, and that'll be the first round. If I'm not mistaking, the first and the second round. Don't hold me to that, but I think it's going to be the first and second round this year. I, I don't know. I think they ought to make this a little more interesting. Kind of make it like a wrestling event. <laughs> they put the head coaches in a ring. A battle whoever, royal. Yeah, yeah, whoever's left in the ring gets the first round pick. <laughs> um, that would work. Yeah. <laughs> I, little, I have, it sounds a little boring to me. You get everybody's behind a desk. They're doing draft picks. It, it's everybody speculating on who's coming and, and who's going. Absolutely. Because um, they're talking about Peyton Manning. Mm-hmm. Uh, nobody knows. I know. I, I read in the news today um, that the tit- he's going up and, and taking a look at the Titans. He spent time in Miami looking at. Everybody's speculating that's where he's gonna go. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, I know he's you've heard he's got a house out there, so Correct. he likes it there. So it'd be a good choice. Obviously, he doesn't need the money. No, uh, it's not gonna be hurting for money anytime soon. You're not gonna see him out there, you know, on the out there in the streets with a football in his hand, a sign saying "We'll pass for money," you know. <laughs> so he, he's not gonna be any food lines anytime soon. I don't think so. No. So where do you think he's going to be? Where do you think personally he's going to sign? Wow, that do you have is. Any, do you have any speculation here? That is the hundred million dollar question. It seems like, uh, you know, if you had asked me that very same question a week ago, I would have told you, oh, there's no doubt in my mind he's going to Miami. Well, you know, every day it seems like it's something new. You know, I mean, I'm sitting around and I'm hearing. Well, Denver is 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 the logical choice. Then I'm, I, you know, on, on the way home this morning, 
I heard, okay, well, he's meeting with the Titans and and they're all but positive he's going to sign. And then, you know, you look at the Cardinals and, and, you know, oh, well, Peyton Manning is is 36 years old and he's had several neck injuries and, and surgeries and the Cardinals would be a great place for him to be. Honestly, in my opinion, where do I think he'll land? I, I honestly think that it's at this point right now. Between, how old is he? How, how old is he? How he's, he's 36. And what and, what kind of lifespan do you think he's got left? Oh, wow. Um, ooh, that is a great question. I, if if I had to break it down, I, I, I couldn't see him going maybe but to about 40 years old. Um, so you figure another three or four years, uh, you know, whoever's going to give him a contract, it's obviously – going to be big in one way shape or form whether it's um incentive laden or 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 you know total bonus money uh but but i i actually see him going about another three or four years um and as far as who do i think he's going to go to that wow at this moment in time i i think that that uh you know he's he's either going to go to the denver broncos or the tennessee titans i i really believe that you don't think miami Um, no, I, 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 you think he's going, I guess my, my question is, is he going where he's going to be comfortable or is he going somewhere where he thinks he's going to have a chance to get into the game? Yeah, that's, uh, Uh, again, that's a great question. Um, if he was looking to, to go somewhere where it's going to be instant playoffs, I, I don't see that with, uh, with Miami. I, I simply don't. I mean, granted they finished the season pretty strong last year. They just gave up Brandon Marshall uh, yesterday um, to the Chicago Bears. So who is he going to throw to in Miami? Um, Denver, again, receivers are a little iffy. Tennessee, not too bad. And, and with the Arizona Cardinals, he he does have arguably <clears throat> one of the, the best wide receivers in the league, and that's Larry Fitzgerald. I think that the Cardinals could be a really, really good fit for Peyton Manning. Whether or not he goes there, well, that's a whole other question. So uh... – realistically what you you're you're putting your in the right now who's your number one pick uh so next the next show everybody we can hear oh, terry was wrong or not i want wow. it on the record who this is who, 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 who's got him hurtful wow man i'm you're... gonna go with miami okay you go, you go ahead and you give me your pick i obviously i'm not sports guy terry is i'm a technology guy but go ahead terry let's hear your guy let's hear your pick you know if if I could pick this and get, I would be a very very rich man. Unfortunately, I'm not a rich man, and and if anybody's uh you know really taking stock in me on this one, um, do not put a lot of money on this. But if I had to put a guess on it, let's go. Wow, we can hear uh, a lot of confidence going here. Uh, yeah, I know this is scary, you know, because I, <coughs> I I'm I am uh, so up in the air with this. Um, I'm gonna let's go. Let's say Denver Broncos right now. I'm so going to say that. You think he's going to knock Tebow down to the second spot? I'm going to say that they they not only don't have him on the roster, they're going to bring in someone else. I have a feeling that they're going to trade Tim Tebow in one way, shape, or form. He's a done deal in Denver if Peyton Manning comes. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't really see that happening. Because they talked about Peyton Manning coming. I mean, mm-hmm. everybody's been talking about Peyton Manning. I mean, Redskins. Uh, yes. They, I heard brief talk about the 49ers. Mm-hmm. But, this Alex Smith had issues with uh, signing a, con- a short-term contract. I-, I heard talk of a three-year contract, but he wanted a five-year contract. I don't really think it's a money dispute so much as he just wants to be able to kind of put five years behind 49ers. They had a really good year. I think they had a coach that believes that believes in him. Um, You're right. Obviously, they just what signed Ran- Randy Moss. Correct, Randy I mean, Moss. So you got you got Randy Moss. You got mm-hmm. Gore. Gore's Gore's a fucking tank. So <laughs> that he is, um, <laughs> that man will boulder through anything. Um, this is they true. Had a great year. And if they have another year like that, I really hope to see him in the bowl next year, this year coming. Um, who do you see? Who do you see the matchups coming? Who do you think is going to have a good year? I, I don't want to hear Redskins again. No, I, I hear that from everybody. We live in the Washington DC metro area. Mm. And obviously we have a lot of Redskins fans out here and I've got to listen to Redskins rhetoric everywhere. But Fortunately for me, I get to hear Baltimore Ravens fans, but they can't talk either because they can't <laughs> they can't hit a 32 year old field goal field goal without messing it up. This is true. So, who do so, you who do you see coming in? Uh, well, you know, every, obviously this it's it's a lot going on with the draft, and you got mm-hmm. Peyton Manning, and that throws a lot of a, a lot of variables up in the air. 
this is correct. I mean, if I mean, obviously, every year you're going to be looking at the Patriots. Just as long as Tom Brady's there, you're going to be looking at the Patriots um, in the NFC. It's hard, it's hard to discount Aaron Rodgers and in, in the Green Bay Packers or Drew Brees and in the, the Saints. Um, you know, as far as any dark horses out there, uh, you know, there, there's still a, f- a few free agents such as Mario Williams. I, I'd like to see where he lands. Um, but, you know, I think that Chicago, the Chicago Bears, if since they have Brandon Marshall and if Brandon Marshall can stay out of trouble, uh, and, and Jay Cutler can stay healthy, and Matt Forte can stay healthy. The the defense is always solid. I think that they can make a run. Uh, the Detroit Lions in that very same division, they can make a run. Uh, there there are so many teams. I mean, the way that the NFC is any longer, they used to be the laughing stock. I mean, <clears throat> AFC just just ran everything for the longest time, and NFC was kind of well, whoever we put in the Super Bowl to represent us, you know, we're just gonna have to deal with it now. Seems like everything's shifting gears, and NFC is 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 very competitive. I mean, you have the Eagles, who were supposed to be so fantastic last year, didn't exactly pan out for them. But hey, you know what? If they gel this year, they could be right back in it. The Giants are always fantastic, and and unfortunately, I know you don't want to hear this, but maybe even possibly the Cowboys or the Redskins uh, could could be up there. And hey, the Niners, they're they're strong. So yeah, you know, there, there, there's a lot of options there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess this is what we're gonna to have to wait and see. It's gonna be an exciting year. I think everybody's kind of waiting. They just don't want to see the same two teams get back to the to the big one again. Well, agreed. I mean, if 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 uh, the Patriots never made it again, I couldn't be happier. I mean, in all honesty, hopefully, you know, we'll get one of those bottom feeding teams to come up and and uh, you know take over. But hey, you know, it's the NFL, so anything can happen. Yeah, that's true. Um, if you guys disagree with Terry. You can send us an email at uh, the statement show at gmail.com and give us a little uh, mm-hmm. a little plug there. And you can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter at the statement show. Um, obviously, you're going to be a lot of people who disagree with you, and we'd love to hear from you. Um, well, you know what? That's what that's what makes everything so great. And I'm I'm hoping that the that our listeners, our followers, people that subscribe, YouTube, whatever the case may be, look. Don't be afraid. I, I, I've i got broad shoulders. I can take it. So and I'm sure that there's going to be a lot. And here's the crazy part. You know what? Next time that you hear from us, I'll probably disagree with myself in some way, shape, or form. So probably. that's just that's just the way it is for me. So definitely please send everything, comments, good and bad, everything into me. I exactly. can take it. All right. Um, let's switch over a little bit here. Uh, mm-hmm. we, we're a uh, our format here is going to be sports, and we're also going to talk technology and in general news topics. And uh, we don't want to spend the whole time talking about sports. We are going to switch over here a little bit to technology news, so everybody gets to hear a little bit what's going on. And I'm a big Netflix fan. Oh yeah, um, I know you get the discs. I, I do the streaming uh, over my PS3. I also have a Roku, Roku box. Uh, if anybody doesn't know what that is, it's a small device that you can hook up to your TV, and you can stream uh, HD quality video through your internet service through Netflix over to your TV. It's really, really cool. Um, they have a couple different versions out, but the most expensive one's only $99. It's very affordable. Uh, also, it's about $7.99 a month for uh, streaming service. I mean, you'd think they were sponsoring us the way I'm plugging it right now. I just like it that much. Um, you can catch <laughs> up have, a lot of shows. So I have not stepped up into uh, uh, 2012 at this moment. So I I am probably like a majority of our listeners right now, having no idea what the Roku player can even do. I have no idea. It, it has channels. So there's a lot of different uh, options. It's not only Netflix. They also play uh, Amazon streaming service. Mm-hmm. Uh, Amazon has been competing with Netflix for a little while now. They have their own streaming service, and they do television shows. In my opinion, uh, they duplicate a lot of the same content, but they don't have as much content. Um, you do, in order to get access to their streaming service, you have to sign up for their uh, shipping service, which is about $80 a year, uh, $79.99, I believe. Mm. Uh, it could be off by a dollar or two, somewhere in that range. Um and at, when you pay that, you get two-day guaranteed shipping on most items. Uh, not everything qualifies, but you get access to their streaming service. It's just kind of nice. Um, I tried it. You get a, you can get like a 30-day trial if you want to try it out. But uh, I, I didn't, I didn't care for it as much. So I expect the content will probably be getting much better. You're going to see a lot of uh, competing services coming. 
Um, <clears throat> everybody's trying to ramp up to compete with Netflix because they just didn't see it going this way. Netflix is such a dominant force in the streaming service. 30% of all internet traffic is from Netflix. Wow. Uh, yeah. Um, so that's a, that's a major thing. A uh, lot of money. And now Netflix is picking up steam because they're offering their own original content. They're starting to make their own TV shows. They're becoming a, basically like a television channel, mm-hmm. except they're only online. And wow. it, in my way, it's the way things are going in the future here. And uh, they have uh, House of Cards, I believe, is a show that they picked up. They're mm-hmm. starting to be kind of like a all the TV shows that don't make it on TV. They're starting to shop them around. And Netflix is actually going after uh, a show that was recently canceled called Terra Nova. Oh, right, right. I did hear that, yes. And um, <clears throat> it's in very preliminary talks. Obviously, nothing's, nothing's final. Um, but... Uh, They've been shopping it around, trying to find people who want to pick it up. And uh, from what I read, it cost them almost twenty million dollars to do the first two-hour uh, uh, premiere episode of Terra Nova. Hmm. Um, so we're talking a lot of money here. Sure. Uh, Netflix has it, obviously. Um, I believe they paid about three hundred million dollars for House of Cards. Um, but and uh, they they got Arrested Development as well, correct? Yeah, I do believe they get. I, I do believe they got Arrested Development. There should be some stuff coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd really love to see more content, more original. I mean, original content is fantastic. I'd like to see them update some of the stuff. Uh, it's a nice place to go watch some of the older programs too. Shows from the past. You remember from when you were a kid? For me, it would be Knight Rider. And I remember <laughs> watching Adam Twelve. Obviously, that's I wasn't a kid when that came out, but it's still a cool police show. So um, there are quite a few things that you can check out on Netflix. Uh, I really suggest that people go check it out if they don't have it. You can watch it on your computer as well. Um, yeah, because I think I sat at my house one day here and literally watched two or three seasons of uh, what was that? The uh, not the month uh, Adams Family, Ad, like literally three seasons of the Adams Family. On, it's uh, it's, it's really it's ridiculous how you can get on like ah uh, you get on and watch TV and you find yourself sitting there for hours just watching the same television program. You get hooked onto a show and you just start watching one episode right after another. I some of the TV shows that I've actually liked to watch. Now, obviously, I don't watch these every week. I'll let them build up on my DVR for weeks before I watch any. Mm-hmm. But the show that I'm really current with is The Walking Dead. Oh, my. Um, yes. One more one more episode to go, and it's the season finale. Uh, but if anybody's watching The Walking Dead, I was, I was really amazed at this last episode. Um, mm-hmm. But it's, it's graphic, AMC. I mean, it's amazing what they will let cable – television have on there now bodies being ripped apart um, hmm. just the amount of gore i never thought they would allow that on tv and it's it's amazing because i'm not that i'm trying to grandiose uh, people being ripped apart but the content just what they allow to be on there uh what's acceptable nowadays and- you want to know when i was hooked on the walking dead about the first five minutes of that do you remember when the little girl was walking there and 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 the cop he was just kind of taking a look and next thing you know she turns around she's a zombie and and he shoots her and i'm like are you kidding me well that was a monumental yeah that's my amazing that's what i'm saying how how often do you see a little girl getting blown away with one right between the eyes exactly now obviously it's because she's a zombie so in a way you know very acceptable um yes. way of going obviously i mean you're gonna put away a zombie it doesn't matter right. um it, it's a it's a very i love the show um it's so you'll, you'll, you'll probably hear me talk about it a lot i, I hate the lapse because it could be this time next year before the next season comes it's just right. how long they push it but i mean you see a police officer who goes into a coma comes out of a coma trying to deal with the world obviously i, I i'm really surprised he, he he made it as long as he did Right. But he's really coming into his own attitude-wise. Uh, are you current on the episodes? Um, I'm about three or four episodes behind at this moment. I definitely um, don't want to tell you uh, about what happened in this last episode. There was a zinger. Oh, and well. It's a major game changer. So I'm, I'm not going to tell you, but uh, you yeah. need to catch up because uh, next this next week's episode is the finale for the season. Yeah, I mean, you know, here, here's my thing. I'll, I'll sit around and I'll watch these shows. And then it just seems like I always go back and forth and back and forth. But but I, I tend to go to like the comedies for whatever reason, you know, and I'll, I'll so I'll sit there and I'll watch The Walking Dead and I'll, I'll I'll get really into it. And the next thing you know, I'm like, man, I don't 
I don't want to do the zombie thing anymore. You know, I want to go like like one of my oh, favorite shows. Yeah, one of my favorite shows is Eastbound and Down. I, I love the show. The uh, show that you got me into. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, okay, fine. It, it's not exactly a a family show, but I'm not going to really sit down with my ten year old and watch it. Uh, you know, but with that being said, uh, it, it's, well, yeah, it's not. It's not family friendly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know, it seems like a majority of the shows that I sit around and watch. Like uh, uh, Shameless and Californication, you know. It, it, All right, let's listen to the shows. What What are your shows? What, uh, name Name the shows you watch. Oh, easily uh, number one is Californication. That is 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 easily my favorite show. Totally. It, here's the thing I think about. I I watched the first season. That's my big complaint about Netflix again. Mm-hmm. Uh, they'll put a season on here, even though it's in what season now? Oh, uh, five. Yeah. So there there was only one season on Netflix. So I watched one season and then I didn't go on. Um, but you want to talk about a major role reversal between David Duchovny and the X-Files. He really picked one that he did. <laughs> yeah. It went totally the other way, which I agree. And you got to do that. But. but you know, there was, it was, it was a few years back there when he, you know, he, he came out basically saying that uh, he was a sex addict and in Californication, the man is literally a sex addict. So I don't know. I how... wonder if it was a publicity stunt. Right. Right. I mean, he, he is not exactly in, in that show, uh, you know, the the greatest person in the world. You know, he's kind of a deadbeat and you know, I mean, when 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 you think of things as in like, you know, what do I want to do with my life? Well, do I want to be a deadbeat writer who has cheated on his wife and his kids hate him or actually should I say his daughter hates him? Uh, you know, he's been fired numerous times, but yet he's driving around in a Porsche and 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 hanging out the beach half the days and and basically just having sex with any and every woman that he comes across. So I mean, uh, hey, you know, I mean, I want to be a deadbeat writer. You know? <laughs> <laughs> We're like, what the hell? What well, a job. I mean, uh, you got – so, all right, so Californication, obviously. Mm. Uh, Eastbound and Down. Eastbound and Down, which is a HBO show, correct? It is an HBO show, yeah. Basically, the premise behind that is uh, a uh, – Kenny he, Powers. Uh, Kenny Powers is a, uh, is, is a, is a former – Major League Baseball players kind of at the top of his game and his big head and his ego and, and all the other countless amounts of, of ignorance that uh, Kenny Powers has done has has <laughs> led him down a a really strange path. Uh, and if you watch the show again, you know, look, don't turn it on and expect to, to sit there and watch that with your children. But, hey, I'm going to tell you right now, the guy is is hilarious and pretty much everything that he uh, he does. Some people may look at it and go, he's irritating. He's not very funny to me. I'm the complete opposite. You know, I like the laugh. So I'm one of those guys that just turn on. If I could do anything, I'd turn on a comedy. I'm, I'm turning on, uh, you know, Dumb and Dumber before I am Titanic. Yeah, I mean, you know? I love this guy. Uh, what's what's the guy's name? The guy plays Kenny Powers. Oh, uh, you know, wow. I can't remember his real name. <laughs> That's funny. Right? He, he was in the movie called Pineapple Express. Right. A really funny movie. And uh, he he does a lot of good characters. Um, David McBride? David McBride? Is it Daniel McBride or David McBride? I think I, I know who you're – yeah, I, I can't remember his name. It's something McBride. And what is your other show, Shameless? Shameless, yes. Uh, and what is this story about? <laughs> well, it, it's pretty much as, as the title – uh is there it, it's it is definitely shameless well, basically uh william h macy is the dad and he, i don't know if you know who he is he was in boogie nights and several other movies uh he's kind of the dad and he's he's a low life that pretty much has um abandoned almost his his children uh his oldest daughter is the one that kind of raises everything all the all the children and let me tell you what if you watch one episode of it you're going to be hooked because these guys are exactly as the show says, shameless. I mean, they will do anything and everything you could possibly think of. Again, though, I'll put it to you like this: don't don't watch it with your kids, though, because it's it's not a very family friendly uh, show by any means. It's a great show, though. Okay. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I already named Walking Dead. Um, I like to watch. I like to watch the Comic Book Men. It's a new sh- show that uh, Kevin Smith has. It comes right on after the Walking Dead. Uh, a very interesting show. It, basically, it's, it's kind of like this. They sit around, they do a podcast, and they they talk. He talks with his buddies that run his comic book store, um, the Secret Stash, and it just shows them operating the, the comic store from day to day. So it's a really cool, um, cool show, I believe. Um, 
I mean, I gotta be honest, man. It's I kind mean, of that comedy right after the watching people get ripped apart and little girls <laughs> getting blown away, and it's comic books. I mean, this is not like nerdy comic. You know, when I think of comic books, I think of like those little geeks that are sitting. You know, I mean, come on, is is it is it really is it that good or are you just it's novelty? I guess. Like I said, you need to have that little that little uh, uh, comedy kind of. Uh, I don't know, mix right after you watch people getting killed. It kind of, mm-hmm. t- it kind of brings you back up a little bit. And Kevin Smith to me has always been very funny. Oh, I'm not saying everything he's ever done was great and what he, anyway, but everything I've ever watched that he's made, um, Clerks. just funny. He's really good at dialogue. So that's what he does. Um, he's just a funny guy. Again, not really something you want your kids watching and they're not going to be into it anyway. So no, um, I, I watched Terra Nova for a little bit. I'm not going to say it was one of my favorite shows, but it was a cool show. It was an interesting concept. And um, obviously they canceled it, and Netflix is in talks, preliminary talks, to see if they might pick it up. So I hope that gets resurrected. Now, is this um, something – I mean, is this is this like uh, – is this just rumor, or I mean, is this serious talks that they're going to – No, pick? right now, when I say preliminary talks, to me, preliminary talks sounds like, hey, they call it up and say, you interested? And somebody reported it. So – Oh, okay. I mean, we're talking twenty million dollars for the first two hour episodes. So obviously, right. we're talking. In, I would say each, in my opinion, now obviously this is not researched fact, but I would say we're talking five, seven million probably per episode. Um, mm. it's expensive show. Plus, they film it in Australia. Um, because you need that wilderness and you need that uh, foliage to kind of push it over the edge. Sure. Um, it's kind of the set. Um. Some of the other shows I watched, Being Human. I watched the British version on PS3, which, by the way, is pretty good. They also have the American version on the PS3, but that's Being the one that human. I started with. It's called Being think... Human. It's a, a very interesting concept. You have a vampire, a werewolf, and a ghost living in the same house, and they're trying oh, wow. to be more human. And okay. it just kind of shows that the, the cross between the, the – the concept is a, they're trying to help each other stay grounded. They don't want to go out and murder each other. They don't. They don't want to go out and murder other people. I'm sorry. So they're they're trying to help each other. And hmm. uh, yeah, it, it's a really cool concept. It's a good show. So if you like vampires and werewolves, it's it's pretty cool. So are we talking like True Blood? No. no. <laughs> um, it's funny how you watch vampire stuff and automatically and, assume True Blood. Well, <laughs> every I guess. Every version of vampires, they change something. It's all changed. Like, uh, like in being human, uh, they can be in the daylight. They don't oh. like it. They try to stay out of it, but it doesn't kill them. Um, <clears throat> uh, I don't know. Uh, other, you know, the werewolves can only turn at the full moon. You, I've seen some shows where they can turn whenever they want, and there's a lot of things that have changed. Um, I don't know. I, I, I find. Different vampire schemes. Uh, I like the, I guess to me the best movie of vampire wise would be um, Interview with the Vampire with Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt. I always thought that was a really cool version of vampirism. I definitely sure. don't get into the Twilight series. <laughs> uh, when I watched that, I kind of forward through all the the romantic kitty tweeny stuff, and there's about 20 minutes of movie there when you do that. So. So you're um, showing no love for that uh, that uh, Eddie Murphy vampire movie that was several I'll be years. Honest with you, I've only seen parts of it on TV. <laughs> it does actually it looks funny, but you don't take that as a serious vampire right. movie. No, 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 not at um, all. The other show I like is uh, there's a new show on called The River. Oh yes. Yeah, it was picked up for eight season for eight episodes. Uh, it's a Spielberg production. Uh, they kind of worked on the project and they got them to pick it up for eight episodes and. I really like where it's going. It's a really cool show. Um, basically, it kind of reminds me of if you were to think uh, Steve Irwin disappearing in the jungle and then six months later they basically say he's dead. and uh, No pun intended, obviously. And then um, mm-hmm. the family decides to, to shoot a show going to look for him. And there's all kinds of like paranormal activity going on in the woods and everything. I don't really want to give anything away. Because I think people should go and check it out. Sure. But it's a really interesting concept. Um, yeah. And of course, the other one I watch is Merlin. And Merlin. They, that's also another one, kind of like Being Human, where it was a British version. It's a British show. Um, it's a BBC production, so it's, I like that show. Um, I would have took you as a Jersey Shore kind of guy. <laughs> no, not at all. No. Uh, no situation. Uh, no inner situation on you. And no, not at all. Um, hmm. 
if I, I don't find that show fascinating at all. It's just another. It to me, it's kind of like a trampy horror, horror version of um, the real world. Wow. Yeah. Only it's the same people, and the, to me now they're not very interesting. It's just uh, very stereotypical. Um, okay. So I have two older kids. Now you know this. I have two older children, and you know, given the fact that they're two older boys, I watch. There, there's a lot of things in the house that I've sit around like what are they watching and you know one of those was the jersey shore and i, and I thought there's no possible way this is going to be dumb i mean i mean this, this is going to be bad you know and i sat down and watched it a few times and, and i have to admit if nothing else it's entertainment you know if nothing else there's some sort of of entertainment value now is it well, a, a lot of things are entertaining <laughs> i mean my wife watches gray's anatomy and private practice that doesn't mean i'm gonna watch them i mean uh, well that's it's entertaining for some i watch army wives with her now and then uh, but that's about and... touchy feelies i like to get with the with the well, shows even that even kind of pushes its boundaries with me sometimes but it's an interesting enough show you, you've pretty much lost your man card at this point you know I, watching I, that I, yeah yes that's absolutely you're done um uh <clears throat> I'm going to tell everybody right here, even though he didn't mention it here, he's a big Golden Girls fan. And, uh, uh, no, 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 no. So if anybody's wife, lost their man card. Let me – let's reverse that. My wife is a big Golden Girls fan. I just happen to sit down and do the right thing and watch the Golden Girls with my wife because I happen to be happily married to my wife and want to continue man, you, to be. You, you like these shows, right? Um. Well, uh, you know, the Golden Girls is a lot funnier than Army Wives or Army – Whatever it is there. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, uh, what was it? Grey's Anatomy, I think you said there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to let you keep Grey's Anatomy. And I don't I'm, watch Grey's Anatomy. My wife watches Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> how about this? We'll just both watch. What's the old term? Happy wife, happy life. Yeah. Have, that, hey, I've been married going on 10 years now, so uh, I'll watch all the Golden Girls that I possibly can in order to stay married for another 10 years. But if I had my druthers, I'm, I'm I'm watching Eastbound and Down in Californication before I will Golden Girls. Absolutely. There you go. <laughs> uh, all right. On the flip side, any games you play? I am a huge Madden fan. I mean, now look, I know that the Madden franchise is, as you know, it's I don't know, it's kind of ran its course. I get it. I understand. But look, I can't. At this point, it's just major tweaks. It's player changes, it roster changes, and they change the gameplay a little here and there. And they upgrade the graphics a little at a time, but it's the game is the game. Everybody and, knows you're playing football, you're playing online, or you're not right. playing online. Everything that you're saying, I completely agree with, but I can't pull myself away from it. You know, I, I wish I could tell you this. I mean, I wish I could look at you and say you're wrong, Zach, but you're not. You're right on. And you know what? If you got 2012, you got 2011, you got 2000. It's pretty much the exact same game, like you said, but with a couple of tweaks. But you know what? I don't care. I love Madden. I want to keep getting Madden. And I, I, will... well, I still have the 2010 version. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mean, I, I think that the 2010 version's a, a bit different than the 2012 version. But, you know, hey, I, I, I do don't. You trade, do you trade yours in, by the way? Uh, yeah, we, we go up, you know, with, with the kids, you know, they, they, they get a lot of different movies or, excuse me, games. I'll get like maybe a game or two a year. Now, you know, they're constantly buying games. So yeah, they'll take them up to what is a GameStop up there and they'll trade their movies in. And, or excuse and they'll me, give you, yeah, they'll give you a buck and a quarter a piece. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, basically, if you're lucky, you know, maybe a dollar, dollar, a quarter a piece. But, you know, if you trade in 40 to 50, maybe 60 games, you know, you can buy another game. So it's not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. that. I feel like I'm getting ripped off. You know, walk into the store a week later and find your game on the shelf for forty five dollars. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, You're a Battlefield fan, right? Or a battle? Yeah, I, I'm. I, I'm a big Battlefield three fan. Right now, I'm going to tell you right now. My brother got me. I'm, I was never a WoW fan. Mm. Uh, I tried it. I played it for a little while. I just couldn't stick with it. It was. It's like the modern day Dungeons and Dragons. You know, people rolling dice. That's that's why it's such a big takeoff. I think people. It's it's just it's kind of like you know you know Lord of the Rings and all that stuff wrapped in one. It's basically just Dungeons and Dragons that everybody's playing on the computer playing together. And it's yeah. a big social event, which is why it's so popular. Um, my brother got me into uh, the equivalent of that is the new Star Wars: The Old Republic, which is the same thing. Um, that's that's PC, right? 
Exactly. It's, okay. It's a PC game. They, they're coming out with a version for the PS3. Okay. And probably the Xbox. But in my opinion, it won't be the same. The he, only way that would be interesting is if you could cross-platform all three systems together where they play together. So if I'm on a PS3 and I'm on the server, I can play with somebody who's on the Xbox and play with somebody who's on the PC. Mm. That would make it interesting. That, that would, would make amazing. it a massive online That would player. be great. Then they have a chance. Um, but honestly, this game is doing very well. Um, they're making good money. Um, online gaming is... It, they spent, if I write correctly, I think it was somewhere over $200 million uh, mm. creating the game. You got to figure it's fifteen dollars a month after the initial purchase of the game, so you get thirty days, and then you get fifteen dollars after that every month to stay into this. Uh, oh, okay. So, so just I just want to make sure that I got this right. So you buy the game, and then you have to pay more money, yeah. in order to keep that's, going. Oh, that's, wow. that's the hitch. That's why these games make so much money. Blizzard made billions of dollars, mm. uh, and are continuing to make billions of dollars because of all the people they have on their service. It's the same thing with Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's really well done. No, Everything, there's voice dialogue for everything, so if you don't want to read it, you don't have to. World of Warcraft, you have to read everything. It's kind of annoying. But right. Star Wars is exactly the, the, the opposite. They have gotten voice actors to do everything for voice. Um, it's very simple. I'm not a big gamer as far as the, the online stuff, um, but They've gotten, they, they've they've really gotten it good for beginners. Um, and it, whether they decide to do the the freebie thing where they let you get on and level up a little bit and then make you pay later, right? You can buy the game and download it from the website. You don't, I mean, but it's really hard on your bandwidth if that's the way you want to go. Sure. But the game is amazingly addictive. Um, so uh, <laughs> if I lose my job, everybody will know why. Um, <laughs> but it, it's. I mean, I don't want it to become an obsession like that, but I try to play for a little, on my days off. I play a lot, um, and if that, it's a very addictive game because you, you, it's social. You're playing with everybody that you see online. There is, is somebody around the world playing with you, and everybody has a common interest. So it's a really fun game. You get into it, and people can help you with missions. So if you really like online gaming, or don't know if you do, it's something you would try. Um, but it can be expensive. Um, so uh, I did fifteen dollars a month. I wasn't even willing to do that for the for World of Warcraft, but right. for this game, that I probably will do that. So you're liking that, huh? Wow. Yeah, it's a it's a very interesting game. It's, I mean, I don't see gaming. Obviously, everybody likes to play on the iPad and touch. Can you really see playing these types of games on a touchscreen? No, no. Not everything was meant to be touchscreen. I mean, everybody talks about how the gaming and the, the I've, I see articles time and time again explaining how the new iPad. Is the future of gaming. They've been saying that since it came out. Until okay. you can get processing power uh, that's going to be the equivalent of what's on the PS3, you're not going to see that happening. Sure. Um, and, 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 and a separate as, controller, which I'm, I'm hearing they're talking about doing like a Bluetooth connection where you can hook up a controller to it. So basically the iPad's just your screen. So yeah, um, I, I can't get into I mean, you know, in all honesty, I, I, I have a Toshiba. And I, you have a Toshiba as well. Um, you know, and it, if people listen to the show, hopefully they'll 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 figure out one thing. I, I I'm only going to speak about it myself. I'm not going to throw you under the bus here, but uh, I'm just not the Apple <coughs> kind of guy. I'm not the iPod, a, a iPad, iPhone kind of guy. I like my Android. I love Android everything. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm an Android person too. Um, I I am that geek on that. But with that being said, you know what? As much as I love the Thrive that I have right now. Um, I don't like playing games. I don't want to sit around and play Angry Birds or whatever it is on the, on the touch. I'm just not a fan of it. So, I mean, I'm, that's I'm not. The... Yeah, that's something uh, I think it's going to be more so. Uh, those are the type of games you can play on your phone, and that's something you can do where you're sitting, waiting for your food at a restaurant, or you're sitting right. at a doctor's appointment and you just want something to do instead of reading the you know the the 30 year old magazines on the shelf. Um, <laughs> I'm myself anyway. Uh, I, I'm going to tell you right now, when you're going on a long car ride and you got your daughter and I have my daughter in the back seat and she's bored mm-hmm. and I'll turn Netflix on on my phone and let her watch Flipper. She loves watching the old programming for kids. So right. I, I'll throw the phone her way. Netflix, by the way, now has a an adult version and a kid version so that when they pick the kid version, they'll see all the kid stuff. Mm. Kind of nice. I, I didn't know if you knew that, but no, I didn't um, know. 
I, I'll throw it on, let her watch that in the back seat while we're driving. Um, so there's there's a lot of options there. But, so now 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 in other words, with this Netflix for kids, I mean this is this is like I mean are they only going to do like say G G rated or are they going to go PG? I mean what's honestly what's the, I really don't know. I, I saw the icons on there. They're SpongeBob mm -hmm. and uh, some some other kid friendly programming. I would imagine that it's going to be you know. A certain age I, I would imagine cartoon wise i think it's like a 10 and under kind of thing um that way the parents can let them kind of peruse the catalog without worrying if they're going to see things like being human and some of these because right netflix has gay and lesbian programming right and, right uh, right you're right on that i'm not watching any well i'm not gonna say i didn't look at any lesbian but i'm just saying i don't <laughs> i'm not watching the gay and lesbian stuff too much you're, anyway watch it anyway um <laughs> Now, though, you know what? If I'm not mistaken, I think you and I had this conversation. You are a SpongeBob fan, so it can't necessarily be Netflix for kids. It could be Netflix, Netflix for no, kids. I'm a big kid. I love SpongeBob. And adult. <laughs> yeah, Netflix for big kids, right? SpongeBob is really funny, and if people don't know it, they <laughs> that program is made. Uh, the age target range is in men into their upper 30s and 40s. Mm -hmm. There are plenty. I mean, that's that program was was kind of focused. It, it went from SpongeBob to me to Family Guy to American Dad. I mean, these are all cartoons that geared towards adults. My wife doesn't even let my daughter watch any of those shows. Yeah, I can understand that, you know. So, but I do like Family Guy. I, I, hilarious. So if probably, anybody doesn't like Stewie, I'm, I'm sorry. you got to watch the show to, to <laughs> understand, but it's just it's hilarious. And you, don't even, it, you can pick it up anywhere, and it's funny. So True. Yeah, I, I, I happen to love it myself. So um, – we are going to try to get some – this is obviously our first episode. I uh, would love to hear from you again at the statement show at gmail.com. And we are going to be in the future getting some guests on here um, uh, of all wides and ranges of people, hopefully some, some higher-end people. Uh, we were talking about gaming. Maybe we can get somebody on here and talk about the game. If you have any suggestions, send us an email, and we'll see if we can't make that happen. If you, uh, if you think Terry is uh, terribly wrong on his picks – Huh. Uh, remember what was what was the pick again? Manning going where? Uh, oh boy! See, I can't Red remember. Skins, that's right. Uh, um, that's, uh, wow. <laughs> I think I've developed amnesia at this uh, point. So obviously uh, Terry's so confident he can't remember who he picked. <laughs> so if you think he's wrong, you don't agree with his picks. I'm not the big sports guy. I'll just tell you who I. I mean, obviously I love the 49ers. I've been a 49ers fan since I was a kid. Um, but I'm, I have no delusions. Alex Smith had a great year, but it was the first year they really did great. I just think it took a really good coach to believe in to believe in them. And yes. but if you have suggestions, send us an email. And if you think uh, Zach is a little bit of a girl for watching Grey's Anatomy, uh, let him know. Uh, I watch Army Wives, not Grey's Anatomy. That's just <laughs> bad. And if you have any technology questions. Or sports questions, get send us an email, obviously, or follow us on our Twitter page and, and uh, Facebook page. Uh, working on the YouTube channel, um, so hopefully we get this show uploaded there too. But it, you can also get our show at podbean.com and look for the statement show. Okay, uh, I think this is a good place, and uh, we will see you next week. Yes, sir. Lindsay Lohan, call me. <laughs> Send us an email or voicemail as an mp3 to the statement show at gmail.com. Please keep all voicemails to 30 seconds maximum, please. Also follow us on Twitter at The Statement Show and Facebook. Theme music provided by podcastthemes.com. For professional studio quality podcast theme music and voiceovers, go to podcastthemes.com. <laughs>